Honorable Minister of State for Home Affairs, Shri Ajay Kumar Mishra Ji, dignitaries on the dais, delegates from G20 countries, industry captains, media friends, I wish you all a very good evening. This is the valedictory session. I'm sure you have had a real good two days of invigorating sessions in which you must have shared your experiences, your knowledge, and a variety of topics have been discussed. I'm very happy that a very nice chair summary has come on the basis of the deliberations here. I'll take about 12 minutes in my address and cover basically three points. The first point I wanted to cover is the approach that India has taken. Our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji's vision of having a digital India. Second point I'll cover is about what are the efforts we are taking to reduce the digital divide. Then thirdly, I'll cover a bit about our strategy, India's strategy about cybersecurity. Friends, in 2015, our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji launched the Digital India Mission. This was a very ambitious mission. The mission had multiple objectives associated with it. One major objective which was the key part of this mission was that technology should be democratized. We have seen in many parts of the world, technology has been cornered by a few big tech companies. Is that the right model for a country? Is that the right model for a democracy? Is that the right model for a society which is evolving so fast? Perhaps an alternative is needed. That's why the primary goal that our Prime Minister put before the nation and the policymakers and all the innovative brains was that how can we democratize technology work on that? Democratizing technology has three aspects. First, no single or, or no, I mean, in no case, the technology should be cornered by a few handful of companies. Second, the poorest of the poor person should have the same access to technology as a rich person, as a person who has more resources. Third, the technology should en encompass all the areas which, are, which affect every day, the day-to-day -day life of a common citizen. So the approach that we took to realize that very important goal was an approach of public-private partnership. What was that public-private partnership? The public-private partnership approach that we took basically had the elements that the platform, the core platform of major digital technologies will be developed using public funds. I'll give a couple of examples. The first example is of the payment system. The core of the payment system is a platform called UPI. That platform has been developed by the government using public funds. It's a very robust platform. It's an open platform, open access, interoperable, available to everybody. Then the banks join this platform Startups join this platform. Small and medium and large businesses join this platform. Close to 350 million citizens of India, they join this platform. The result is a payment system which today does about, on an annualized basis, $2 trillion worth transactions seamlessly and make a guess what is the average time for settlement of a transaction, which means actual transfer of funds from one account to second account. It is less than two seconds. That's the, that's the power of a platform approach. That's the power of a a PPP approach, a public-private partnership pr approach. And that's the power of the vision of a prime minister who said that, yes, 
our focus should be on democratizing technology. Similar platforms are now being created for e-commerce. We call it ONDC, Open Network for Digital Commerce. For healthcare, where close to 700 million people have been onboarded so far. During the COVID, uh, during the COVID pandemic, we used a platform called CoWin. Again, the core platform was developed by the government. The clinics and hospitals joined it. The pharmacy companies joined it. The logistics supply chain, the cold chain companies, the airlines, they joined it. The entire scheduling for a population of 1.4 billion people was done using this platform and flawlessly within a short time frame of about 18 months, more than 2 billion vaccine doses were administered using this platform. <laughs> Friends, I'm sharing this because when we interact with many international delegations, with my colleague ministers from other countries, the first concern which comes is, yes, technology is great. It has made a huge difference in our lives. It is transforming our lives. It is coming, bringing new solutions. But we are worried about monopoly on technology. But we are worried about power of a few handful of companies on technology. This approach that our Prime Minister gave us through his Digital India mission basically is, a, is an answer to that big problem. That was my first point today. The second point I'll make is about the steps we are taking to reduce digital divide. In every society, friends, we are facing problems of digital divide on multiple counts. The first count is the physical infrastructure itself. The second count is literacy. The third count is ability to use those tools. Even if the tools are available and one is literate, the ability to use those tools. We as a society believe in inclusive growth. And inclusive growth is equally important in a, in a highly digitalizing society. If we don't work on digital inclusion today, the gap between the haves, digital haves, and digital have-nots will increase at an exponential pace. The pace is very different from the pre-digital world, where, okay, if somebody, the, the gap was not that much. And today the gap can increase exponentially over a few months or a few years. So we as a country, our Prime Minister made a very clear mandate that every citizen of the country, whether living in big cities or living in the remote villages, must have a very good, high quality internet connectivity available. Today, close to 840, 850 million people have access to internet, but that is not enough. We are working towards covering each and every village each and every square meter of the country with good, high-quality 4G, 5G coverage and broadband coverage. And towards this end, the government is investing <clears throat> significant amounts of money and good amount of energy. We have a program for reaching 4G services to the farthest corner of the country. We call it 4G saturation program by which we are investing about 4.6 billion US dollars to bring 4G services, telecom services to the areas where it may not make good commercial sense for the private sector to take 4G services. By now we have invested 8.3 billion US dollars in creating an optical fiber cable grid so that each and every village and a group of villages, they have the optical fiber connectivity. And this is now getting augmented by investing another 13 billion US dollars to make sure that each and every household 
gets good high quality bandwidth high quality internet connectivity we call the program bharat net this kind of inclusive growth is very very essential in digital society i believe that the way we have invested in the highways in the past the way we have invested in creating power grids in the past in countries which are developed countries and in countries which are developing today the same kind of effort needs to be needs to be put in making sure that our internet connectivity the optical fiber and the telecom network reaches to the last person in the society the third point friends i'll make is as we all know the theme of this g20 year is one earth one family one future the challenge also is common to all of us the challenge of cyber security as you must have deliberated over the last two days the challenge is a very complex challenge it doesn't have any boundaries technology is evolving every day if we find a solution to a problem today tomorrow there will be a new problem that we have to solve and ai is going to increase the complexity multifold just a few weeks back mr sam altman was here we asked him do you think ai will be able to do basic research do you think it is possible to do today he said that no it is not possible to do basic research today but we are not far away from that day when ai would be doing the same basic research that some of the biggest the best the most brightest minds in the in the human civilization have done that's scary that's really really a totally different way of looking at the human civilization and the human society so we'll have to adopt a multi pronged approach at least for the cyber security purpose for every society we'll have to have a strategy at national level we'll have to have another strategy at the organiza organizational level and we'll have to have strategies at individual levels we cannot just leave it to okay there is a firewall fine we can be secure with it we'll really really have to think through the challenges we'll have to be nimble footed and we'll have to cooperate across boundaries we'll have to look at solutions which if there is a cyber attack happening in one country the countries will have to collaborate societies will have to collaborate and come up with solutions which are common to all in the digital economy ministers group we are approaching we are trying to have a consensus that the way the human civilization covered many crimes through international collaboration through creating infrastructure and institutions which work across boundaries now human society will have to work for similar ins institutions for cyber security also many new tools will have to be developed for example recently some of the tools that we developed in india and we now offer that to every any country who would like to use them because we believe in the philosophy of one earth one family one future one challenge that we all face so can we share the solutions that we find in our societies with other societies some of these solutions have really helped our country face the complexity of cyber crimes one of, one of the solutions was so effective that we could working with the ministry of home affairs working with the ministry of telecom working with the ministry of information technology and the state governments all collaborating together millions of fraudulent accounts which were used for creating cyber frauds were detected and closed so that kind of approach will have to be taken at the international level also i will conclude now in my conclusion i would like to exhort all the members from g20 countries that the way we adopted technology in the previous generations 
For example, when the automobile came and the highway networks were created, we created a legal structure and we created an education system in which we taught everybody to walk on or drive on one side of the road. Similar efforts at the global level, similar efforts at the national level, similar efforts at every organizational level will have to be taken for creating cyber awareness, for following cyber rules, for having cyber hygiene, for making sure that we protect ourselves because those efforts will be the efforts which will help protect our societies, protect our organizations. I thank you very much for your patient hearing and wish you all the very best in this conference. Thank you so much.